human physiology covers a range of organ systems, each with a specific set of complex processes to carry out certain functions within the body. However, it's important to keep in mind that all the different systems work together to allow an organism to survive, function, grow, and reproduce. The male reproductive system is a great example of exactly this. Erection and ejaculation are dependent on the divisions of the nervous system, while the endocrine system and its hormones initiate spermatogenesis and drive the development of male reproductive structures. In this video, I will be covering part one of the male reproductive system. The process of spermatogenesis, the important anatomy to know when discussing spermatogenesis, and the hormonal controls over the male reproductive system. To begin, there will be a brief discussion of the anatomical structures that are important to know when discussing spermatogenesis. The testes are paired gonads where spermatogenesis occurs and also the primary source for androgenic hormones, testosterone, and dihydrotestosterone that govern much of the male reproductive anatomy and physiology. The epididymides are like little hats on top of the testes and are the locations for sperm maturation and temporary storage. The scrotum houses the testes and is responsible for protecting and regulating the temperature, something so vital to the proper development of sperm. Sperm require a temperature of 3 degrees Celsius less than the core body temperature in order to properly develop. When the environment becomes too cold, the cremaster muscle contracts, pulling the testes closer to the body in order to absorb heat from the body core. The dartos muscle contracts as well. to shrink the scrotum in order to provide a lower surface area for heat loss. When the environment becomes too hot, the cremaster muscle relaxes, allowing the testes to descend further from the body, distancing the testes from any excess heat from the body core. The dartos muscle also relaxes to expand the scrotum and provide a high surface area to allow heat to dissipate. The most important hormones that regulate the male reproductive system include gonadotropin releasing hormone, luteinizing hormone, follicle stimulating hormone, inhibin testosterone, and dihydrotestosterone. When a male reaches puberty, hypothalamic neurosecretory cells increase the secretion of gonadotropin releasing hormone, which stimulates the anterior pituitary gland to increase the secretion of LH and FSH. Luteinizing hormone is responsible for stimulating Leydig cells to release testosterone. Follicle stimulating hormone is used to stimulate spermatogenesis by working synergistically with testosterone on Sertoli cells.
Sertoli cells release inhibin once a homeostatic level of spermatogenesis has been met. Inhibin inhibits the secretion of follicle-stimulating hormone from the anterior pituitary gland. Testosterone and dihydrotestosterone are the two androgens of the male reproductive system and drive the majority of processes and behaviors in males. Testosterone is the principal androgen and is synthesized from cholesterol by Leydig cells of the testes. Testosterone is converted to dihydrotestosterone through the enzyme called 5-alpha reductase. Together, these two hormones drive the development of male reproductive behaviors the development of male reproductive structures and spermatogenesis. Now that we have covered the anatomy and hormones involved in the male reproductive system, we will discuss the process by which sperm are produced in the testes known as spermatogenesis. The seminiferous tubules within the testes are lined with sperm producing cells called spermatogenic cells. At the basement membrane there are stem cells known as spermatogonium which remain dormant during childhood and begin dividing and developing following puberty otherwise known as reproductive maturation. Embedded within the seminiferous tubules, along with the spermatogonia, are Sertoli cells, which extend from the basement membrane into the lumens of the seminiferous tubules. Sertoli cells nourish the developing sperm as they transition from spermatogonia into spermatocytes, then spermatocytes, and ultimately sperm. Sertoli cells also phagocytize excess spermatid cytoplasm, control the movement of spermatogenic cells, and regulate the release of sperm into the lumen, a process called spermiation. Lastly, Sertoli cells secrete inhibin. which feeds back to the anterior pituitary gland, regulating the release of follicle-stimulating hormone. Between the spaces next to the seminiferous tubules, there are interstitial cells known as Leydig cells, which secrete testosterone. In humans, the process of spermatogenesis takes about 75 days and begins with spermatogonia, which are diploid. Some of the spermatogonia undergo mitosis, and remain near the basement membrane to serve as a continuous supply for future cell division and sperm production. The majority of spermatogonia, however, undergo developmental changes. This leads them to differentiate into primary spermatocytes, which are also diploid. Each primary spermatocyte undergoes DNA replication and meiosis 1 
resulting in two cells called secondary spermatocytes, which are now haploid cells. Afterward, meiosis II occurs. To produce four haploid cells, called spermatids, which are essentially sperm without flagella. The final stage of spermatogenesis, known as spermiogenesis, involves the developments of spermatids into sperm cells, called spermatozoans. There is no cell division within this stage, but spermatids become spermatozoans by becoming long, slender, and developing their flagella. In the event known as spermiation, Sertoli cells release the connections between sperm and themselves, allowing sperm to enter into the lumen of the seminiferous tubules. Since sperm cannot swim at this stage, even though they have their flagella, secretions from Sertoli cells and peristaltic contractions push sperm into a network of ducts known as the reet testes, and then into the epididymis. The next process to discuss will be the process of sperm maturation, storage, and transport of sperm through the male duct system to contribute to semen formation. The male duct system consists of the epididymis, vas deferentia, and ejaculatory duct. At the end of spermatogenesis just discussed, the sperm have been moved into the epididymis, the little hats on top of the testes, it is here that sperm mature and develop their full fertilization capabilities. Sperm maturation within the epididymis takes about 14 days to complete and involves the sperm acquiring the ability of motility, oocyte penetration, and fertilization. The epididymis can also store sperm for several months. Although in males that rarely happens. Once the sperm cells are mature and sexual arousal occurs, the epididymis release sperm into the vas deferentia through peristaltic contractions of smooth muscle in preparation for ejaculation. Erection and ejaculation will be the main topics of the next video on the male reproductive system. The male reproductive system is a complex system that requires many different anatomical structures, secretions, hormones, and influences from the nervous system. However, these processes are essential to understand when discussing human reproductive systems and the important steps leading to fertilization. Without these vital steps, fertilization cannot occur through sexual intercourse. I hope this video was helpful in understanding the steps to prepare the male reproductive system for copulation and fertilization, while also providing a great example of how multiple body systems interact to influence the functions of an organism.